Hi, my name is Craig, and I want to talk a little bit about packet radio. I uh, created a little device here to kind of upgrade this, uh, what you're looking at, a Yaesu FT991. Um, it has a, uh, right now it's, uh, I added a Raspberry Pi to the side of it here, a Raspberry Pi Zero specifically. And the Raspberry Pi Zero isn't that interesting, but uh, the, the software that we put on it is. Um, ultimately, what this Raspberry Pi does with the addition of a USB cable is turns this into a very capable packet radio. Um, I'll talk about some of the things it can do right now. Make sure I can get this lined up right. Um, so, first of all, you notice this is on an APRS frequency. So, the Raspberry Pi is controlling the radio from a cat perspective. It can do push to talk, change frequencies. It's got multiple modems in it uh, one for VHF or AX.25 packet, and then another modem for, uh, for RDOP, um, which is used typically for packet radio on uh, HF frequencies. Um, so what the Raspberry Pi does, if you're in the field and you don't have any internet or anything, I mean, that's okay. It's headless. There's no monitor for it. Um, any Wi-Fi device will actually do. It becomes a hotspot, um, in which point you can just get any Wi-Fi device. Uh, take this old phone picked up on eBay for 100 bucks, And uh, you can point in, your phone will connect to a that. Raspberry Pi over Wi-Fi, and then there's a website actually running on the Raspberry Pi that has all of these services that you can see. Um, we can talk about them kind of one at a time here. Um, so the, the top service, these are the services here that you can enable, and these are the service statuses down here. So um, starting from the top, uh, from the TNC, that's Terminal Node Controller. This is for VHF packet type stuff, 1200 baud things. Uh, it's a TNC such that I can connect a uh, like an APRS device to it or an AX.25 device to it. Um, it'll, you can connect over TCP IP networking, networking or you can actually connect over Bluetooth, which is the method uh, that I typically use. Um, so things like APRS Droid, which we'll talk about here in a second, um, will connect to the Raspberry Pi using this phone um, and then you know, do all of the, the packet communications over here on this, uh, this Yaesu uh, all-mode radio. So we can do the TNC as, as well as an APRS digipeter. If you're familiar with APRS, um, this will repeat packets uh, for your positions and messagings and things like that. What I like to do is when I go up into the high Sierras is I can turn this on, leave it in the truck, and then use my HT and uh, send a small SMS or messages or email. Um, and this will relay it um, with <laughs> hugely amplified uh, to the rest of the world and hopefully get to the Internet and back. Um, the VHF WinLink Gateway, uh, this, if you're familiar with WinLink, is how to do packet WinLink. Uh, this turns this actually into a gateway. Now, you would need internet access, of course, uh, to connect to this um, using a rate some radio somewhere. Um, you can send and receive email um, uh, that way. That's the VHF WinLink Gateway, and again, that uh, would be like a 1200 baud. Uh, the PAT WinLink Client, this is would be the something we can run uh, on the Raspberry Pi via this web browser. We'll demonstrate it. It, uh, it is basically your inbox, your outbox, uh, composing messages and doing connections and things like that. Um, the R dot modem, this is the HF modem. We talked about how there's an AX.25 modem. Um, that's for VHF. Well, there's also an R dot modem that's typically, it's more well suited for HF uh, signals. It deals better with the band fade and things like that. So we can do email over uh, uh, VHF. Um, or we can do email over HF using a slightly different uh, modem protocol. And then, of course, there's rig control. It doesn't really need to be here, but uh, ultimately the rig control service is what uh, actually does the push to talk, um, change frequencies and things like that. Now, all of this is done over the USB cable. Um, the reason I chose this Yaesu FT991 is not only because it's all mode, it's VHF and HF, but uh, it has a sound card built into it, it has cat control built into it, and all of it happens over a single USB cable. So the Yaesu FT991 can actually get it a pretty good deal, and you don't need any extra sound links or sound modems or cards or anything like that. All you need is a simple Raspberry Pi Zero for about 25 bucks and a USB cable and you're in business. Um, so we can do real, really quick, I'm kind of an HPRS person, we can talk about that. You notice the APRS TNC is active, so uh, any device that talks to a KISS interface for a TNC will work now with this Raspberry Pi. It's listening on Bluetooth and TCP IP ports, um, so you can go either way. Uh, rig control is active down here, so it can actually do the push to talk and send packets and things. So uh, what I can do is uh, load up APRS Droid, which is a pretty cool APRS client. We're going to load this, 
And hopefully, let's see, I'll do start tracking down here. And this is going to connect over Bluetooth. So you can see up here, it's a little hard to read. Um, and you'll notice my position is trying to acquire my GPS position, which may or may not work. We'll see. Um, you'll also see the packets uh, that it's receiving flowing, hopefully flowing at some point. Um, kind of a rainy day here. I don't know how many packets we're going to receive. Anyways, hopefully I can send a position uh, if it has my GPS coordinates. Uh, yeah, we're seeing packets here now. Uh, so KE6FOA sending his position. K6FGA just repeated, sent his position report. Um, I still haven't sent my position because uh, it doesn't look like I have a GPS lock yet. But APRS isn't just about a packet report or a position reporting. It's not just about driving to work. It's about messaging. So if you look up here, there's this little uh, paper airplane. I'm going to press that guy. And you can send messages to stations. And some of these stations can be like SMS or email gateways. And I actually wrote one. Uh, KM6LYW-9 is a virtual radio in the cloud. Um, I can ask it things. Um, you can see I've already done that here a little bit. Um, I can say, uh, you know, where is another station? I can, I can, I can ask locate uh, space G-Town, which is a uh, digipeter around here. I just, a lot of times I just want to see if it's up and operating. So I can say locate G-Town. This is, this message is going to KM6LYW-9, which is a virtual radio I wrote in the cloud. And I'll send that. And you'll notice um, that it's sending some stuff, receiving some stuff. Um, hopefully I'll get a packet back here that says uh, the position of G-Town and uh, how long ago it's been since he's transmitted. We can see the packet retry counts here. We got one of seven um yeah it doesn't look like i made it to a digipeter yet oh yeah there it did um so km6 liw9 replied um with uh, g town he's 11 miles east southeast of meadow vista his precise coordinates and uh that was uh, 0.2 hours ago so i know the digipeter is up and working that's what g town is it's a uh, just a digipeter i mean i can do things like um i can do weather w-e-a-t-h-e-r and if i transmitted a packet recently um, it'll tell me the weather for my location, you know, if I transmitted a position packet recently. Um, so let's see, the weather is 52 degrees, so it's going to be high of 54, a low of 45, rain right now, and tonight, more rain. So yeah, that's probably why packet isn't working quite as well as it could. I'm sure I got a wet VHF antenna. So anyways, that's APRS um, using the Raspberry Pi in the ASU 991 and just some cell phone I got on eBay. Um, and I can do email, SMS texting, all of that um, with this setup on this frequency. Um, look up uh, SMS GTE for, for uh, messaging or SMS messaging. And also look up station called email-2 uh, to send and receive email using APRS packet radio um, in this manner. Okay, so that's cool. So that's VHF packet radio. Um, let's, let's take maybe take a little more look at uh, HF radio. I mean, how do we send email, like with attachments and stuff, with inboxes and outboxes, things like that. Um, let's take a closer look at WinLink that's implemented on this Raspberry Pi. I'm going to turn off the uh, APRS TNC. Um, I'll leave the rig control on. Uh, you'll see the system status update here once the service is actually deactivated. So everything's inactive right now. So to send an HF email message using WinLink, this could be anywhere in the world, honestly. I might have a little help system to remind me. Send email over HF. Um, so basically, I'll turn on rig control. I'll turn on the RDOP modem and start up the PAC client, which is our, our email client. So we'll start all of those. So uh, let's see. Let me go back and start the three that I just talked about. So I'm going to start the RDOP modem, uh, rig control, and I'm going to start the PAT email interface. And we'll wait a second for those to load. We're going to look down here when we see the, those three services are active. Um, while I'm at it, I'm going to switch. While I'm waiting, I'm going to switch over to, let's see, I'm going to switch over to 40 meters. On the radio, what you see, we're at uh, 7 megahertz now uh, using a simple dipole. Um, I'm going to hit refresh here. Mm, the services haven't activated. Let me try this again. I am going to start, maybe I should start them a little slower. Uh, let's start RDOP. You can see the web page is loading here. Wait a second. Okay, RDOP is now active. Um, I'm going to start the rig control daemon. And the web page is loading. Again, this cell phone is talking to the Raspberry Pi that's stuck to the side of this radio over Wi Fi. And I'm going to start the PAT client 
there. And this is again our inbox. And once we see all these bottom three active, now we can do HF email. Um, and we're going to use a 40 meter. So down here, I'm going to start, go to the pack client. There's a little pack client icon there. Click on that. You'll see just a, a traditional inbox. Let's see if I can focus this, this any better. It's still loading. Um, and you'll, you'll see a status message down here like uh, AX.20, or not actually, we're not doing AX.25, we're actually doing a hard out packet. So you'll see the Winlink connections happening here. Um, I just can't get this to focus any better. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna check our email. So I can click on here and then action and then connect. And then I can connect to uh, some Winlink server somewhere in the world because uh, we're using HF here. So I can look at all my 40 meter connections. Um, let's look at K6 Oat in Utah. So I'm in California. We're going to connect to a server in Utah using the RDOT modem. And again, all of this is happening on the Raspberry Pi. This is just a web interface being presented by the Raspberry Pi on a cheap cell phone that I got on eBay. So with that, I am going to connect. Um, you can see things transmit. That's me transmitting. Now we listen. Nothing yet. That's me. Oop, there he is. Actually, it's easier if you can see the uh, see the little lights up here. You can see the protocol actually happening. So I'm receiving right now. He's announcing himself, transmitting, receiving. So that's the RDOT modem working. I um, you can see in this very bottom corner here, um, the actual text is going back and forth. Um, it's logging into a CMS server for WinLink, um, and Chet said, "Hey, I want to check for for email." It's responding. And as we're going back and forth here, and ultimately it says, I know you can't read that, but it says disconnected, um, and some statistics. But anyways, that's how that works, and so I just checked my email via Utah, and of course, you know, uh, with Pat, I can say uh, action, compose, and I can put any old email address I want in here, um, or I can put a call sign, I can put uh, KM6LY. Uh, W, let's we'll get rid of the volume here, and I'll do a test, TES subject, and I'm just going to say body here, and of course got lots of extra exclamation points, don't know why, but that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to send that message, I'm going to say post, so the email went to my uh, outbox, and now I'm just going to simply connect again, um, action, connect, and uh, you know, K6Oat. OAT works so well this time. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and connect again. And this time we're going to send an email. I'm going to draw your attention to these, uh, the receive and transmit lights up here. So red is obviously me transmitting, establishing a connection. Green is him transmitting back. And down at the bottom here, you can see this, the connection stuff happening. And ultimately, since I'm sending an email this time, you'll see me transmitting a little more. So uh, let's just listen in a little bit. You can hear the protocol here and watch the protocol. I'm sending a checksum right now. It's really hard to read, but that's what it says down there. And once it accepts the checksum, then I'll go ahead and transmit the actual message. Now, I think, remember, this is about 300 baud. Um, you know, your modem 20, 30 years ago was 56,000 baud, um, 56K modems, right? So this is extremely slow, but it does work, and it, this is essentially global. I've connected from California to Australia uh, doing this. And I'm still sending checksums, just going back and forth. Um, honestly, don't know what it's doing. There's also a GUI client that you can actually log into this. Um, this might be stuck in a cycle for a while, so for the sake of time, I might uh, I might go ahead and end this guy. But uh, anyways, that is the sum total of what this does. I'm going to turn this down uh, while it's working. Um, again, it's really a cheap hardware solution, if you consider an HF radio cheap. This is an FT991. Again, no special hardware or cables required other than a Raspberry Pi stuck to the side and a USB cable that goes into the back. Um, Otherwise, I don't really have a way to distribute what we've done here with this uh, software. Um, this is kind of a proof of concept of what's possible. Um, 
we uh, there's a lot of good channels out there that help you describe each and describe how to install each and every one of these services. Um, if you want to do VNC uh, AX.25, that kind of stuff, um, or you want to do you know WinLink email over HF, this Raspberry Pi will do it. You don't need to be on the internet. You can be out in the middle of nowhere, and I mean you could be I don't know in the Antarctic somewhere, and all of this would work exactly the way you're seeing it. Uh, the Raspberry Pi would connect to uh, this phone over Wi-Fi, and that's how you operate the Pi, and then the Raspberry Pi in turn drives this uh, Yaesu 991 radio. Anyways, that's how Packet and WinLink, APRS, and all that stuff works here on with a simple Raspberry Pi. Some great software that's out there. Go ahead and look it up. Um, and, a, and a pretty capable radio. Um, this is an all-mode radio. Uh, it doesn't just do HF. It's, you know, VHF, UHF, uh, HF. That's kind of why I bought it. Um, but it would work with other radios as long as it has some sort of USB interface for cat control and audio. That really simplifies the process. So very few wires. Anyways, this is Craig KM6LYW. Uh, this is just a demonstration. I <laughs> didn't know where to put this, but I thought I'd share it with somebody as to the possibilities of using um, a digital radio with the Raspberry Pi and just uh, some cheap phone uh, found on eBay. Again, Craig KM6LYW.